Hi and welcome to today's video in which we are going to test the RX 7600S by AMD which comes in an AMD TUF A16 Advantage Edition with an Ryzen 7 7735HS which is basically a 6800H, it's basically the same CPU. And we're going to do something a bit different today because I'm going to actually record the games live as um, I play them and talk to you and we will have the chance to try different settings and different graphic options um, to see how that works out. So I hope um, we will be able to actually have a look at some games. Um, let me know what you think about this method in the comments, please. Would you like to see more stuff like that? P.S. All games today will be played at 1080p, if not stated otherwise. Um, the laptop's resolution is actually 1920 by 1200. So if you're using the full native resolution, you'd need to subtract a few percent, which won't be noticeable. But I prefer recording it in 16 by 9, just because, you know, habits and... Uh, YouTube and stuff. Oh, and the CPU power reading that you can see in the upper left corner of this OSD is, uh, it does not work as intended. A lot of my viewers suggested that it's reading a some kind of combined power of the GPU and the CPU. Um, also, all games have been tested with the laptop's turbo mode, which ramps up the fans quite a lot and gives maximum power to GPU and CPU. So since the microphone is close to the laptop, you might um, actually hear it if the noise cancelling is not getting rid of it in the post-production. If you're interested in a full review of the laptop itself, make sure to subscribe to the channel, um, as I will most likely post one in a few days. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so the first game we are going to look at today is going to be God of War. And the settings we have right now are set all to Ultra. Um, FSR is disabled. We are at 1080p, so all of the games today are going to be at 1080p. Um, okay, so let's have a look. We're going to reset the measurement. So, okay, so right now we are at around 80 FPS, plus minus. And what really amazed me um, from the start with the 7600S is the very good 1% low. There are basically no stutterings at all. It's um, really, really great. It's amazing. I have not seen this on all the RTX 4000 series uh, mobile GPUs that I just tested these uh, weeks. So it goes even up to like 100 FPS in some cases. I've seen it going down to like 58 in some other spaces, some other places. So I would say the game is perfectly playable on ultra settings without using FSR, but we're going to have a look at different settings in a bit. Yeah, move, little man. Little Jeremy Renner. He does look like Jeremy Renner, doesn't he? Okay, still 60, 68 FPS at a more cynic scene like this. Okay, before we are saving him, okay, we are going to change the settings a bit. We're also going to try, just for the fun of it, we're going to try high settings. So, of course, on high settings, we are getting some more FPS even. We're going, like, in the 90s right now. Oh, that looks like a lot of enemies. Whoopsie. Okay, so as you can see, we are not having any problems with whatsoever with the 1% low. They are just amazing in this game on this mobile GPU. So just we're just going to activate FSR real quick. Pushing the FPS even more. We're going to use the quality mode. Okay, now we set once again and we are getting more than 100 FPS on high settings. So if you really want more than 100 in a game like this, I get. I guess you could use high settings with FSR and be good with it. So of course, all the FPS that we see today depend on um, the area which you are um, currently traveling through in a game and um, different areas, different settings and scenes, they have different FPS, but um, you get the point, we just can't cover all of them, I guess. So let's just jump to the next game. Okay, so the next game is going to be Cyberpunk 2077 and we're going to test the ultra settings, but I'm for now I'm going to turn off um, FSR. We're going to activate it later. Let's have a look at the pure performance of the 7600S using ultra settings on 1080p in that game where we have to reset the measurements. Okay, so it does look Pretty good so far. We're getting 
Ultra settings are getting 90 FPS <coughs> in this crowded area. 1% lows seem to be alright so far. Well, usually, um, my experience, uh, games tend to need a little time until they fully loaded all the shaders and stuff and then the 1% lows start to get even better. So let's just enter that car and drive around a bit and see how that works out. Because usually in faster driving, we're seeing some FPS drops. Okay, we're going down to 70, but still an average of 76 so far. Still looking good. <coughs> the RAM is about at 6.1 gigabyte of its full potential of 8 gigabyte. This, this looks fine. This is playable. This is perfectly playable actually on Ultra without FSR. Keep that in mind. We even might try to activate some ray tracing later to see how the 7600S is able of handling that. Maybe we have to, we'll have to drop the settings to high in order to achieve that. You know what? Let's just let's just try that out right over here. Let's just let's just do it. That's what we're here for, right? So ray tracing on. Well, why not? Let's just let's just go all in and see <laughs> if it's still playable, right? Um, we are going to deactivate FSR for now. It's, is it crashing? No, it's not crashing, but it's unplayable. Wow. Okay. So we are at 18 FPS. That's unplayable, and I'm guessing that activating FSR won't help a lot. Well, let's just put it to auto. Let's see if that will do the trick. Okay. Okay, so we're getting 30 FPS now. Obviously, it's using like ultra performance FSR. It's getting really blurry, and you can see that the resolution is dropping. Well, let's just reset the 1% low. Okay, but still, that's not really playable. But to be fair, we activated full, full ray tracing here. Let's just deactivate some of it. It's not really better. Oh, well, we're getting about 32 FPS. 33. I mean, okay, if you're okay with 30-ish FPS console experience and a bit blurriness, I guess you're good to go. Ray tracing low. Ray tra Let's do ray tracing. Ray tracing medium. Ah, he's not using reflections then. Okay, we're, 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 we're in the 40s now. I will tr probably... Let's reset the measurings, measurements and drive around a bit. It's doable, kind of doable if you're okay with 40 FPS. Probably would want to cap the frame rate for more stability, I don't know. Let's just get off the car, out of the car and walk around a bit. Am I going to die? Well, it's, it's doable, as I, as I said before, but you really have to be okay with 30 FPS. And the 1% lows seem to... I guess the VRAM is actually too small. As you, if you look at the VRAM, that might be the issue here. Okay, just for the, f for the sake of it, we're going to also going to try medium settings without um, FSR, uh, without ray tracing, just because once more we're like in the 70s. So actually, wasn't that the FPS we got in on ultra settings? That much improvement, actually. We could also just use ultra settings and be fine with it. I guess you can call that perfectly playable on the 7600S, I guess. Next! Okay, today's next game is going to be Hogwarts Legacy. And um, right now we are um, using the high settings preset, um, but I've changed some of the settings over here. I usually always turn off motion blur, depth of field, chromatic aberration and film grain as they just they don't do anything for me and they use performance. We are also using FSR2 quality as set by default in the game. We'll start at the castle. So we are at around 85 right now. 1% lows seem to be fine. So far in my experience in the castle they usually drop a bit here and there and on some systems the game has a lot of issues even on the ever so smoothly um, 7600S. As you can see here, we do have frame drops. You can see that in the frame time graph on the upper left side, these spikes, they actually mean that they're stuttering. That's not really the game's fault from my experience. Uh, not really the laptop's fault, it's the game's fault, sorry. Okay, let's just walk around in the castle a bit and see what's happening. Well, the FPS is going up to 120 if there's not going on a lot around. There's not a lot going on, I mean. We can also have a look at ray tracing later, but I don't think that in this game this makes a lot of sense. Well, let's just take our broomstick and fly a bit and see where that leads us FPS-wise. So we're getting 
Somewhat between 70 and 90 FPS, even on the broomstick. Let's just fly to Hogsmeade and see what's happening over there. So this game is also depending a lot on the CPU, so the whole laptop is important here. If you are having a laptop with a Ryzen 5 or an Intel i5, it might be a bit less um, depending on the rest of the system. Uh, by the way, 8GB um, um, of RAM is not enough anymore. Don't buy a gaming laptop with 8GB in 2023. I'm talking about the regular RAM, not the VRAM. 8GB of VRAM is okay, but 8GB of regular RAM is not. It has to be 16 or more. Okay, so in Hogsmeade, high settings, FSR. The FPS drop a bit, but we're still around 60 FPS. It looks so cute, it looks so neat, even with the snow, or especially with the snow, right? But we are having some stutters here and there. Let's go into a shop and see what that does for us. Okay, so in the 60s. I mean, we, we probably can play the game on Ultra, but I don't know if it's such a good idea, because <clears throat> that's probably going to be an issue with the VRAM uh, here and there, which is going to cause frame drops a lot more than we are seeing right now. And um, if we are going getting... Going down to 55 um, right now at high settings, I don't think that Ultra is such a good idea. But we're going to have a look at it in a second. We're just going to go to the forest for a bit and see what's happening in a fight before we change the settings. Okay, we're in the Forbidden Forest. So let's see if you can pick a fight. The FPS are at 100 right now. So once there's not going on so much um, in terms of uh, Hogwarts or Hogsmeade, FPS is getting way more stable. Oh, he exploded. Okay. Yeah, I did that. I know. But well, as you can see, even with action going on, no problem. 47,600S on high settings with FSR. Okay, so we cleared out that nest. Okay, so now let's have a quick look at ultra settings, shall we? Right now, everything seems to be fine. Let's just fly around in the woods a bit. It's not in the hundreds anymore. Are oh, we going to see some drops? Let's reset the measurements. Let's see if we can find some enemies and provoke a fight. Okay, but just flying around, we can actually see the difference in the FPS. It's not in the hundreds anymore. Let's see what's happening if we use the ultra settings um, at Hogwarts, shall we? Okay, so now we're in the castle's library. And right now, FPS seems to be really good. Still on ultra settings. Let's turn around for a bit. No frame drop so far. Frame times seem to be fine, perfectly fine. Okay, now, now we're going to see some stuttering here and there, at least. But overall, it's better than expected, to be honest. The VRAM still not. Let's go to the dining room real quick. Uh, we are still seeing stutters, but that's that's most likely the game happens on the best systems happens to the best of us Overall, it's it's playable At least on, on high settings. I would say I love it when they fight Have you ever seen that when they like totally destroy each other? That's really funny. Okay, so ultra settings Still above well above 60 FPS 1% low is not that great. It depends on where you are if you're on the countryside where not much is going on, it's going to be much higher. Which is where you are going to spend quite some time of the total gameplay, actually. Alright. I guess that's it for Hogwarts Legacy. Oh no, I promised to take a look at the game with ray tracing. Let's just use high ray tracing. Or let's just use medium. We're not going to overdo it. So we're going to have to restart the game and we'll be back in a second. Are we also going to use going to use high settings and ray tracing we're not we're not cra we're not totally crazy are we with fsr and ray tracing and actually it seems to be working uh, so far and frame drops here and there it's as as people told me or um reviewers said that it does not make much sense in this game to use Ray tracing is, yeah, it, it's not really looking any better, but some people would like to know, so let's just have a quick look. Ah, uh, okay, that's stuff that's happening. You see these light, lighting errors that does not look good, in fact, indeed. Let's just go outside and see what's happening. Frame drops and textures aren't loading anymore. That's weird. 
Okay, so no ray tracing for Hogwarts Legacy, I guess. Okay, so here outside it's okay-ish, but I'm not trusting this, actually. I would rather turn it off and um, test the next game. And we're going to have a really quick look on Kingdom Come Deliverance, which I haven't tested in a while, but um, just um, wanted to see how it fares on your hardware, especially on an AMD card with um, ultra settings. So everything set to maximum, um, view distance, vegetation and stuff. Okay, let's reset the measurements. So we're getting around very playable. Okay, 50s, we're in the 50s. Maybe ultra is a bit too much. It says experimental settings, but I just wanted to make sure the GPU is maxed out, which is not actually the case. It's having some issues. It's at 75% um, usage only with, um, with really bad frame times right now going on. That's not optimal. That's yeah. not a very enjoyable yeah. experience, to be honest. I mean, it's in the 50s. I mean, it looks great, but that's not the way you're supposed to play. So maybe we will just lower the settings to very high instead and see how that works out. So let's do that. Okay, so now we are on very high settings, which is much better. So there seem to have been some issues going on there. We are now getting, we are now being in the 80s. We're getting 68, 86 FPS and 1% low in the 50s, maybe. Sorry for the German OSD. I um, forgot to change that to English. Let's just travel around here a bit in this nice yeah. environment the game has to offer. And yeah, it's just a quick look. I'm not going to try many uh, different settings here. Just yeah. wanted to see how that's working because the game still does have one of the best, if not the best, um, looking woods of all times. It's just so realistic. It's really dense and uh, often like you're actually in a, in a real wood. We are actually getting up to 90 FPS right now. But absolutely perfectly playable and no problem for the 7600 as once again. So, damn, next. Okay, so in Elden Ring, we're probably only going to test maximum settings on 1080p because um, I'm expecting it to actually work perfectly fine and we won't need to lower any resolutions or anything else. We can try the ray tracing though which is probably <laughs> not going so well. As you can see right now, we are getting a perfectly smooth experience um, with this. So there are mods that actually are supposed to um, destroy the 60 FPS rate uh, cap, but um, I'm not, I've never used one of these. So um, 60 FPS is the goal for today, which is plenty and perfectly enough for Elden Ring. Let's just to travel to a more demanding area. Okay, so still the GPU maxes out at around 70%. No issue so far, as it seems. No stutters. The 1% low is not quite a perfect 60 FPS, but um, I guess that's still okay. If the gameplay does look a bit stuttery to you, that's... Um, uh, that's due to my recording software. I'm using OBS with a capture card, but I have to deactivate the buffer because otherwise the input lag is so high, the games become unplayable. And um, deactivating that actually causes the recording to be a bit stuttery from time to time. So sorry for that, but um, the RX 7600S did not allow me to record directly on the laptop. So I had to go the way by using my desktop PC, a separate webcam, microphone, everything, and uh, record it that way. Okay, but well, seems perfectly playable. Let's just um, swap the region once more, see if it's still um, able to maintain the 60 FPS. Okay, no matter what, where we are, it's, it's perfectly playable. It's on maximum settings. Let's just, for the fun of it, once more, um, try and activate ray tracing um, and see how that works out. Okay, so I actually had to restart the game because it would not load, but um, now we'd, we've done it and um, we're still at 60 FPS using ray tracing on high settings, which I did not expect. Um, uh, there's 
but we can see some frame time issues here. You can see it's like there are consistent, consistent mini spikes over there. It's not looking so perfectly good. Let's just um, see some action real quick and see how that works out. Die, you fool. Okay, so I guess that works. It's it, the GPU is actually going up to 80 to 100% depending on where we are, but it seems to seems to work actually, which I did not expect. Then again, I don't know if it makes any sense in this game if it's actually looking better, uh, which would justify the extra performance um, that's needed, but as long as we're still getting 60 FPS on average, despite the... Ah, well, you know what? I, I, I think it's not worth it. The 1% low, just um, they just suffer from it. I guess it's not worth it. There, there's stutters. There's definitely stuttering right now, which has not been here before. Okay, but I mean, you could say it's kind of playable, right? I'm just cleaning my microphone while Forza is loading. You perv. Okay, now, obviously, uh, Forza 5 did not want to start anymore after just working fine. It refused to load. And I can't fix it right now, so the next game is going to be A Plague's Tale Requiem. We are um, currently using high settings, the high settings preset. And um, I'm not sure about the game's FSR or DLSS uh, policy because there's no FSR. Um, button there, but it says uh, resolution scaling, ultra performance, it sounds like it's FSR. So it's on highest quality or no FSR, high settings at 1080p. And you can see the FPS is at around 46 in this scene. And if we turn around, it goes up to 75. So that's quite a difference um, by just turning around. Okay, so let's go and see how that turns out. We're playing for a while. But as you can see, the um, frame time graph is perfectly smooth and stable. We are not getting anything below 44 FPS uh, with an average of around 59 so far. And as you've seen before, like t just turning around, looking at the different scene is changing at the FPS by quite a lot. Okay, so <clears throat> I'd say we just um, change the resolution scaling a bit. So it's like uh, we're activating something like FSR, and we're changing that to, let's say, quality. Okay, it's going up by a bit. We are now at 68 FPS, with like 9 FPS more. The game looks a bit blurrier than before, but still acceptable. And we are now having a very <coughs> stable 68 right now FPS on average. Seems like that would or it could be the way to go for this game and this um, laptop. By the way, let me show you something um, that I really like about this laptop. I am going to unplug it and look what is happening. Okay, now it's running on battery and it's automatically changing to quiet mode. Um, it drops the performance of the um, GPU and the CPU quite significantly. But, as you can see, it is still playable. You might have to lower the resolution or the settings, um, but the laptop is uh, able to still give like 75 or um, yeah something like that a percent of its performance even on battery which is amazing that's the same as the asus tough a17 which had an um, rtx but um, it's the same with the rx 7600s over here so it's a full amd laptop and um that's quite that's quite astonishing so if you cap the FPS and lower the resolution or the settings, you actually can get two or three hours of gameplay on battery thanks to the 90 watt hour battery. It's a big battery. Okay, so we are going to replug it. You know, we are at 48 FPS and I put PC back in. Wait a bit and we're back to 60, 64, 65. Okay. All right. I had, I don't know what to do. I didn't follow the gameplay. I don't know where to go. Okay, this is the way. We are just quickly changing the settings from high to medium to see what a laptop can do, which requires the game to restart. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so we are back on medium settings and you can clearly see the FPS is going up to around 85, 90, something like that. Still amazingly soft um, frame times 
um, that's really great. That's actually amazing about the RX 7600S. And um, while testing this laptop, I actually changed my mind about um, AMD and NVIDIA for the current gen. And I would, if I had to choose a laptop, I would probably prefer an RX 7600S over a uh, 3060 or a 4050 because this is just a better gaming experience, even if the RTX laptops might have uh, DLSS and um, more FPS in some games or many games, but the experience um, is just better this way. It's more fluent. You don't have micro stutters. You, in most games, it's just perfect. The, and it's perfect from the start. You don't have to play for half an hour until it stops stuttering. It just starts fluid and smooth. I mean, it should be standard, but it's obviously it's not. It's perfectly playable with 60 to 90 FPS, depending on the settings you choose. I mean, you could go low, but um, you don't have to go low settings on this laptop. Oh, as you can see over here, if we have a lot of vegetation going on, the FPS is still dropping a bit on medium settings and the uh, FSR function. Okay, I've actually been able to um, fix uh, for the Horizon 5. We are now running it at um, ultra settings on 1080p. And as you can see, we are getting very good frame rates of 125-ish on average. Let's just drive around for a bit. Oh, there was, there was a really bad hiccup. I guess that's perfectly playable for um, 1080p and um, ultra settings. Let's just go to an area with more vegetation and see how that works out. Yeah, we start like over here, go over the bridge. We're still getting around 104 FPS in the jungle around here. Let's reset the uh, measurements because there was a hiccup when loading, of course. Okay, so 1% lows seem to be very good with around 80. Average FPS 105. And um, yeah, Let, let's just um, unplug the laptop once more and see what is happening on ultra settings in Forza 5. Just give it some time, reset the measurements. Well, it's pretty good. <laughs> you could just sit in the park um, playing Forza 5, I guess. Absolutely doable. Amazing. Again, um, capping the FPS to like 60, reducing the quality a bit. Um, you might actually get two hours or more out of this laptop doing so. That's pretty insane. It's a 16 inch laptop, um, which still delivers a lot of gaming power on battery. I have seen a lot stronger laptops that um, can't play on battery at all usually down to having a Ryzen because they tend to cope a lot better with um, the battery mode than Intel does. Right, shall we? Let's just let's just um, replug the laptop and just for fun use the medium settings to see how much FPS we can get on maximum. We won't restart for now. We just have an immediate look what's happening. Okay, we're one up to 140, probably even more when we restart because. It will reload <clears throat> all the shaders and stuff. But yeah, we'll get somewhat between 90 and 160 FPS in this game on this laptop, depending on where you drive, what you're doing, but perfectly playable, beautiful frame times. I'd say let's go for the next title. Okay, let's just fly above the San Francisco Bay Area in Microsoft Flight Simulator and see how that goes. Right now we are using Ultra settings, which is pretty demanding, as you can see, we are at around 35, 40-ish FPS, depending on where you look at. There's some hiccups in the beginning here and there. I mean, it's doable, it's playable. The game usually does not need um, perfectly 60 FPS to be played because it's mostly a slow game unless you're flying a, a chat like I'm doing right now but well, usually 30 FPS is okay to play the game we all do like 
60 FPS don't be. A few hiccups here and there, as you can see in the frame time graph, it's not perfectly smooth at all. But we are on ultra settings, keep that in mind. Let's quickly fly over the city and change the settings to high afterwards. Yeah, that's, that's a bit unstable. I would have expected a better result for that game, <clears throat> even on ultra settings. Okay, let's quickly change the settings to high. Okay, we are at high settings now. Let's reset <clears throat> the measurements and see how that goes. There's still stuttering going on, but the FPS clearly are better. I actually don't know if AMD GPUs do have issues <clears throat> with Microsoft Flight Simulator as of the making of this video. That's definitely better on high settings, FPS and smoothness wise. Game still looks good on high settings, of course. Let's just quickly fly really high and see how the frame rate reacts to that. Okay, so we are hitting over 60 FPS now, depending on the height and where we look at. So flying a big jet um, from one airport to the other, <coughs> where you usually fly really high most of the time, you would probably get 60 FPS on high settings using the yes, tough A16 with the RX 7600S as shown here because it won't probably make a big difference over which country you're flying because from that distance most vegetation and buildings will be won't be shown we'll just fade them out okay so let's have a quick look at the medium settings before we go to the next game PS the game does not support FSR so I guess that uh, Microsoft hates AMD, probably, I don't know. Okay, let's just fly back down over city area to see how the FPS is doing on medium settings, shall we? Don't crash the plane. Let's reset the measurement. So medium settings, a lot of vegetation going on here, to be honest. Okay, so on medium settings, we are actually getting more than 60 FPS on average even on a highly vegetated area. Vegetated? Do you, do you actually say veg? You know what I mean. So I guess um, let's go to the next game, shall we? Okay, let's play some CSGO, which I have not been really playing since I was like 16, which is like 22 years ago. Of course, back then it was CS 1.6, when you haven't probably even been born. So I have, I have no idea I don't remember the the buttons I have to press to buy stuff. So so let's reset that. We are at around 250 FPS on high settings. CSGO tends to have shitty 1% lows that you actually can't feel it. No matter how smooth the frame time graph is, it's uh, still having low 1% FPS. Yeah, let's just storm in there and die, probably. Yeah, perfectly playable, I guess. Um, 225 FPS on average on the high settings at 1080p. Oh, it was waiting for me, obviously. Let's just try lowest settings for a second to see what the maximum FPS would be. Okay, so we are getting around... Let's reset that. We are getting around 350, 60 FPS right now. That's about the maximum FPS we would be able to get at 1080p on this laptop. Okay, so we are getting around 300 FPS on average using the lowest settings on Dust 2 in CSGO. That was just meant to be a quick test because we all know the laptop would be able to perfectly play CSGO on very high FPS. But I have to be honest, I don't understand why even the newest laptops don't manage to get like 500, 600 FPS like uh, really good desktop PCs do because the CPUs that we are seeing here are most certainly better than the CPUs we had on desktop PCs a few years back. And still, um, we are not seeing the same FPS even though the um, GPUs are very fast, even with fast GPUs. We're not seeing the same FPS. If anybody knows why that is, let me know. I'm eager to know. Okay, next game when I die. I died. 
I just died again. Next. Okay, next up, we are going to play Apex Legends on the maximum settings at 1080p. Um, I don't really like um, benchmarking this game because I'm actually annoying my teammates all the time because I don't know how to play it. I don't know the heroes. I don't know the weapons. And I have to play with others. I can't play alone. Sorry for um, insulting your um, Apex Legends heart um, when seeing this. But um, we, I actually noticed that um, the game has an FPS cap of 144 FPS, which is stupid. I had to fix that by adding a command line in Steam when uh, starting the game. Okay, so now let's have a look. Oh, and after um, trying it on the high settings, we are going to change the settings to medium probably to see um, how much you can get with still having some graphic fidelity on this laptop. Okay, so we are at 135 right now in the air, but we will soon have more than 144 FPS as soon as we are on the ground. And what's going on here? Did I just lose connection? No, I just had to restart it because I lost connection. Okay, so we are in Apex Legends high settings at 1080p. Um, let's see how that goes and then change the settings to medium. Last time I tried, I had a disconnect, so I had to start all over again. Let's see. I don't want to be the jump master. I don't know how to play this game. Stop it. I, I don't know the weapons. I don't know the heroes. All right, let's go. Oliver, Oliver does know where to go. Obviously, so let's follow Oliver. He's the guy. He's our man. Oliver Debler. Cool name. All right, let's go. I am not walking. I had to <laughs> pushing the wrong buttons. Okay, so far we are having around 160 FPS on average using the highest settings. Should we take a different gun? I have no idea. Let's just take. So embarrassing. It's so embarrassing all the time. But the FPS are amazing. On high settings. Present low seems to be very good as well. We are resetting the measurements to see if it stays above 100. Once the level is, uh, the area is really loaded and um, buffered and stuff. Seems like it is. Really good performance. Amazing. Super smooth frame times, but the game usually runs that way. Let's just quickly change uh, the settings to medium. Okay, so we are now on medium-ish settings. There, was, there, there are no presets in this game, so I just had to do a best guess. No, right now we are getting very high, 260-ish FPS, which you can't see on the video, of course, but it feels really smooth. It's quite a chilling match, nothing happening so far. And once enemies are there, I'm going to die. That's how this game works. Okay, been playing for a little longer right now. No enemies so far, but um, average FPS of 225 so far. Let's see if we can spot enemies. Get some action and to get this over with. God damn it. I think I'm crashing again, like some internet errors or something going on. I have no idea. Usually my connection is really good. Ah, come on. Okay, let's let's call this a day. The game's going to run perfectly fine. I I, I want to play the next game. Okay, sorry. Okay, so up next is Hunt Showdown, which is another game that I um, actually don't play myself. I've um, been trying to um, play a few rounds a while ago, so please forgive me once more. And we're starting on the highest settings um, the game has to offer at um, 1080p. With all the fidelity it it can give us. And we're right now getting about 110 FPS in this section, and we will see how that turns out. All right, let's go, damn souls. Um, I remember that you'll have to sneak around as good as you can, and um, I'm going to die very, very soon. Not because of the laptop, because um, I have no idea on how to play the game. I'm sorry. So I'm having some stuttering. I'm resetting once more the measurement, but I'm seeing some stutter right now. We're in the 90s. Even inside of here, we are at shit. Phew. We are at one, uh, 90 FPS, 100 FPS, 90 FPS. The FOV is super narrow in this game on default, isn't it? I can't see anything on the sides. Feels like I'm zoomed in. But, um, I mean, it's it looks playable on the high settings, but 
Oh, I better, I better leave. But the frame drops aren't, they're not cool. Are they following me? Seriously? I forgot how to play this game. Totally. Let's just go somewhere else. <clears throat> Still the 1% low, 1% low FPS are pretty bad. There is some stuttering. Um, once in a while. I don't know if that's because I haven't um, played a lot yet and the game has to load all the shaders like other games do. That's why I actually uh, prefer games now that um, spend some time at the beginning to load all the shaders even if it takes a long time because from my experience that helps with the 1% low a lot. Okay, so we're at 103 FPS on average so far. Okay, let's just walk around a bit so we can actually see some more performance. Let's just get into that town and die already so we can test um, the game on medium settings and see how much FPS we can get in if we can get a 144 stable maybe. Mm, I don't want to go there. Let's go somewhere else. <clears throat> so okay, I'm resetting the measurement once more to see if um, the 1% low calmed down a bit. Seems like they did actually. <clears throat> We're getting 75, 1% low. Ah. As I speak, more stuttering. It's it's micro stuttering, but still, in, in a game like this, you don't really want this. Okay, so let's ourselves let's get ourselves killed and um, restart the match with um, medium settings. All right, so let's go. We are now testing <coughs> medium settings, and immediately we are still seeing that um, the one percent low are problematic from time to time, and the average FPS. Actually, isn't that much higher. Might be because of the area we are in right now. Let's just walk around a bit and see how the average FPS turns out. See you in a bit. Okay, so yeah, the average FPS is around 110 FPS. <clears throat> I, I bet that um, the 1% low would get a lot better after playing a while, playing the whole level or multiple matches. At least it looks like that. I know this game is supposed to make you feel uncomfortable, but Shit. Well, it definitely feels good on medium settings, at least. It feels very fluid so far. I have to point out that on medium settings, the game looks actually pretty blurry already. Something about the anti-aliasing missing. I don't know, if the 1% low would actually be better on high settings, I would probably choose that. But you definitely would want um, as much FPS as possible in this game and a stable experience. Okay, so I think we are not going to test this game a lot longer. And I'll just say next. Okay, so in GTA 5 we are basically using um, the maximum settings, except uh, we're not using all of the anti-aliasing <coughs> and anisotropic filtering. But um, aside from that, I've put everything to max on Full HD, and uh, of course the game is old, like 7-8 years now, but I know that a lot of you guys still play in it, online especially. And it's still a good game and it still looks pretty good, especially with mods, which we are not going to test today, but however, <clears throat> we'll, we'll just take a quick look at the performance. 1% lows, but as far as I can tell already, it's going to be pretty good. Let's just get ourselves a better car so we can drive a bit faster and see how the FPS is affected. Oh, oh. I pressed the wrong button. Get out of there. Alright, let's go. That's just a quick look. Right now we're at 95 FPS on average with a 1% low of 74 FPS. And um, I think we're going to actually test 4K in this game as well because it could actually be doable at least considering the VRAM and the performance we might have to drop some settings. We get stable 60 FPS, but we will see that right now. Okay, so um, at 4K, almost maximum settings, we're still getting around 40 FPS, not quite 60, unfortunately. <clears throat> I mean, it actually feels kind of fluid, but of course we would at least want 60 FPS. On 4K, so we are going to adjust the settings a bit and reduce, at least reduce the anti-aliasing, which we don't need at 4K usually. So let's change that real quick. Turn that off. And maybe reflection stuff 
and um, anisotropic filtering a bit. All right, and immediately we are getting 62 FPS. So it makes quite the difference. So GDA can be very power hungry if you turn on anti-aliasing and stuff. <clears throat> but here you go. Um, aside from that, we pretty much have everything maxed out at 4K, which of course you can't play on the laptop. You will need an external monitor for that, but um, many people have external monitors and uh, nowadays more and more people start having 4K monitors, so why not test a laptop um, using 4K resolution as well. Let's just reset the measurements and drive around a bit and um, we'll see how the average FPS and the 1% low will turn out. So see you in a few seconds. With high settings comes high traffic. <clears throat> Obviously. I just want to get over there. Okay, let's have a little trip to the countryside where the FPS actually seems to drop due to the vegetation. We're at mid 50s right now. Average still 58, but that will drop a bit if we drive around for longer out here. <clears throat> but in the city, it's a pretty stable 60 FPS. 1% low seems to be all right as well, 46. That's doable considering we are on 4K. Okay, let's go a bit faster. We're at 53 FPS right now. I mean, you could still, you, you can, there's a lot of um, settings that you could uh, fiddle around with to achieve a stable 60 FPS on 4K and still have the game look very, really good. So that's no issue at all. Um, so I would say next game. Okay, so the next game for today is uh, actually for Fortnite, which I, I played a bit, as you can see um, in the last time. And um, I'm using the recommended settings right now, which is pretty disappointing um, because we're only getting 56 FPS. So I'm probably going to change that quickly. So this is the first round I've been playing on this laptop. Um, no time for the game to preload any shaders and stuff that's happening. Oh, there's someone has been here before. But I'm not cool with 58 on average, so I'm probably going to change that quickly. We will probably start testing. Yeah, let's let's start testing with the lowest settings, shall we? Let's just quickly change that. Except for the view distance, which has to be far, of course. That's what it's about. So, okay, I think I've changed everything. All right, so now we are getting 195. I mean, the game looks substantially worse. <laughs> But, well, <clears throat> that's the sacrifice you'll have to make for getting high FPS. 1% low seems to be good so far. Okay, so using the low settings so far, the average FPS has been around 150. But it's even, even then it's going as low as 107. And um, it seems as like the GPU is not used, being used to its full potential, which I don't know why that's happening. I have to admit, I'm a bit disappointed by the performance so far. I don't know if something is wrong or if it's supposed to be like that. I don't know. I was just expecting more FPS on the lowest settings, even with the epic view distance, I guess. But as I said before, somehow the GPU does not seem to be utilized to its full potential. But at least considering this is my first round on this machine, <clears throat> the 1% low are really good. I'm usually... Um, I usually made the experience that um, playing the first round of Fortnite on the system is causing heavy stutterings because it has to load all the stuff for a first time. That happened a lot. It just looks so dull on um, the low settings now that we've seen the new graphic upgrade update. I don't, I don't think I would want to play the game this way anymore after knowing how it's supposed to look. Okay, let's just quickly hide somewhere and then um, change the settings. Oh no, we'll, we'll change the settings in the second round. I'll give I'll give it another try. Okay, so you know, um, with um, settings that I'll, I'll try to find like medium settings that are going to work with more than 100 FPS. So it, it will look good and will play fine. Okay, just a quick side note. After playing almost a whole round ending fourth place, I had a average of 144 FPS and a 1% low of 84. I mean, it's doable, it's totally playable, but I was expecting more on the low settings because I've had that result with way slower machines 
okay, a few years back when the game was not that complex, but still, let's see what I can, we can do to tweak the settings. Okay, so I've decided to go with settings that look like this. <clears throat> you can do a screenshot if you want or stop, pause the video to see what I've chosen. Um, I will try to go with the settings in this round. Okay, so with these settings, I think uh, we'll be getting between around 90 to 100 FPS at least. And it looks better than, it looks way better than before. A bit blurrier because we are using the super resolution tool, DirectX 12. Maybe we'll test the game at DirectX 11 uh, later for just a, a second uh, to see uh, how that works. And now let's just uh, play for a few minutes and see how the average FPS turns out. So we're getting a average of around 97 FPS. I guess that's playable. 1% low of 62, at least better than the recommended sendings in my opinion, while not looking that much worse. Okay, so now we'll just have a quick look at um, the performance in DirectX 11, which won't come with the fancy stuff, but maybe, um, maybe better, better performance. Let's see. Okay, we are trying um, the lowest settings uh, using DirectX 11, which um, seems to be pretty similar to DirectX 12, actually. Let's see. Okay, so far we're getting a bit better results with average of 190 FPS. 1% lowest seem to be not so good. Let's reset the measurement. Okay, so it does seem a bit better on DirectX 11 um, after playing some minutes. So if you want the maximum um, using the pro settings, you should actually use DirectX 11, as it seems. I'm not going to try the performance mode because that just looks awful and um, it will provide more FPS guaranteed. So you still have that option if you really need 200 FPS or more. Happy Easter! Um, so I'm going to find some eggs that are hidden in the game and um, see you in the next game. Okay, so the next game is actually um, a bit stupid, but it's really fun. It's this um, panoramic view simulator. I'm kidding, it's um, a battle simulator where you can um, place hundreds of thousands and millions of units against each other and just have them attack each other and um, have a good laugh. So we're having 500,000 Romans attacking 500,000 um, foot soldiers from the medieval. And uh, because uh, just for fun, I've added 100 Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, dinosaurs as well. So let's see how that works out. Right now we are at high settings, full HD. And it seems to be we're being in the 60s, getting um, FPS around in the 60s. And um, this game is mainly uh, calculated on the GPU, not the CPU so much. As you can see, um, the CPU is actually bored out with a 9% usage. Um, but these units are calculated on the GPU in a different way than games usually do. Now look at that. T-Rexes are absolutely going crazy. And um, so what you see here right now is 1 million units at once on the screen. I mean, not totally all of them on the screen because it's so many, we can't see all of them. That's just, it's such a crazy game. <laughs> it's so crazy, it's so stupid, but it's its fun. You can just fly over the um, troops and it never ends. It literally never ends. It doesn't look that bad for having so many units. Yeah, that was just, just stupid fun. Uh, let's just jump to the next game, all right? But it's playable on this laptop with quite big armies, actually. I did not expect that. Alright, so next up is Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. And uh, we are using the um, Ultra settings, actually, combined with FSR 2.0, which is providing a acceptable quality, especially on a 16-inch laptop display. And as you can see, even on ultra settings, we are, at least in the air, we are getting quite high FPS so far. And 1% uh, low seem to be pretty good as well. 
So let's see how that turns out once we've landed. We'll try to survive a bit so we can get um, some numbers that actually mean something. So I'm going to land a bit offside. Um, and we're going to try um, medium settings after that. But so far it absolutely feels super smooth. The 1% low are actually great. There really isn't any stuttering so far, which is um, quite nice. And the game looks definitely um, pretty as well, considering you're using ultra graphics. I mean, um, the FSR 2 on quality is, it surely does add some blurriness to the image, but um, I think it's absolutely acceptable. It's not quite DLSS level yet, but it's pretty close. And an average of around 104 on Ultra, I'll take that. All right, let's just quickly change uh, the settings to something more medium. Let's just hide here for a bit. So, okay, now I am at the basic preset. So immediately we can see quite the difference, but the FPS don't seem to be affecting it that much. Actually, let's walk around a bit and reset the measurement. It's a bit weird that the um, FPS don't seem to be affected um, changing from Ultra to Basic. It's a bit higher, sure. We're at 108 instead of like 104 right now. Let's just walk around a bit more and see what's happening. Let's go outside, even if we die there. Let's see if we can find some action and just die. No way! Okay, so but on yeah on the minimum set on the minimum settings or the basic settings we are actually getting a bit higher FPS. So it's like around 110 FPS, I guess. I actually won the gulag. That does not happen often. Okay, so another chance to test the FPS on the basic preset. Let's land at the observatory. I did eat a lot of carrots lately, that's why my face is looking so Trumpish. Okay, so it would be up to you whether using a higher preset and getting around 95 to 100 FPS on average or using a lower preset and getting around 115. And the game, the game still looks okay on the lower preset, so basically that's fine. But the 1% lows really are quite nice, I have to say that. It hasn't always been like that for me in that game. But the RX 7600S, as I said before, is doing a great job in maintaining really good 1% lows. Especially compared with the RTX 4050, 4060 that I've tested lately. It seems to be so much better. I don't know if it's the GPU or the laptop, but to be honest, um, it actually starts to look like it's the GPU for me. Okay, so let's just jump right to the next game. Okay, so in Overwatch 2, we are starting with um, the Ultra settings. And we'll also try medium settings just to see what can be achieved using the RX 7600S on the Asus TUF A16 Advantage. But it already looks uh, pretty promising on Ultra. In a heavy firefight, around 160 FPS up to 240 still. 1% low is a bit disappointing so far. I'll just reset that because um, I hope that it will calm down. Okay, so far we are having an average of around 199. 200 FPS, 1% lows seem to have calmed down on ultra settings 1080p in Overwatch 2. Okay, so I would say that we are changing the settings to medium because in a fight and in action you actually can't really um, tell the difference between those settings from my experience at least. But maybe that's just because I'm old. Well, let's see how that affects the FPS. Okay, so now we are at medium settings. Same, same. Seems like we're getting about the same average FPS again. That's not the first time that is happening um, while testing this laptop. It's kind of weird. 
Okay, but still in heavy firefights, we're getting a constant 200, over 200 FPS and a very stable, finally a very stable 1% um, low, which is nice. So actually, it doesn't, would not make much sense to choose medium settings. You could just go ultra all the way and enjoy a bit more fidelity while still getting the same FPS. So, um, I did not expect Overwatch 2 to cause a problem to this laptop, so... Let's just jump to the next game. All right, next game for today is going to be The Last of Us, the PC version that recently has been released. And we are using the high settings combined with FSR 2.0, which has been implemented in the game from the start. Um, right now we are looking at around 60 to 70 FPS, <laughs> um, an average of 50 FPS, but I have to reset that real quick. So, um, Let's see how that is going to work out. You can see the VRAM is pretty full already. We're at 7.2 gigabyte of VRAM. And VRAM is being an issue in this game. There are a few hiccups from time to time when entering new zones, but it's very minor so far. Unproblematic. Let's see how that works out after playing for a while. We're seeing up to 90 FPS depending on the area because in some indoor areas when there's not so much to render, naturally the FPS can go up pretty high. Um, probably in the outside areas with vegetation, um, the FPS will drop by quite a lot. We will see. Well, at least in the cinematic scenes that we have right now, the cutscenes, FPS seems to be very stable, constant, no FPS drop so far. Once in a while there's a hiccup, like you can see in the frame time graph uh, right over here. Overall, as you can see, it's pretty smooth though. Actually, um, I would not change uh, the settings to medium. <clears throat> right now I don't see why I would have to do that and uh, using FSR in quality mode is um, fine for me, at least. So in this scene, the FS is dropping a bit, probably due to the lighting. Um, down to 62-ish FPS, but nevertheless, right now we <clears throat> we managed to get a constant 60 FPS, at least. 1% low seems to be pretty good as well, considering the problems um, that people tend to have with this game, especially from the start. I will just quickly turn off FSR to see how that is affecting the FPS, but um, I don't really see the need to do that or to um, downgrade it to medium settings. So now we are rendering at um, the native 1080p without FSR quality, FSR 2.0, that is. And I don't really see an improvement in the visuals that much. And the FPS, actually, actually, FPS are pretty similar. We're still hitting more than 60 FPS. Okay, so overall, I would say we can wrap up this test and. Um, uh, come to the conclusion that it's perfectly playable on the RX 7600S in the ASUS TUF A16 Advantage since we we are able to hit um, more than 60 FPS on average all the time uh, basically with high settings with or without FSR2 that's up to you if you want to gain a few percent more but it's playable really good I just had to record this because look at the game it's, it's obviously a bug where the game thinks that it's raining, everyone suddenly started to drop water. <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't know I could do that. Look, they all just suddenly, they all became wet and started dripping. That's weird. Okay, well, next game though. All right, as for Red Dead Redemption 2, I am actually using the optimized settings that Hardware Unboxed was providing, and you can search for them on YouTube, just Google, uh, just search for um, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Hardware Unboxed and you will get the videos in which um, they will post the optimal settings for this game um, from their opinion. And I really like the settings because they give us very high FPS and still a great visual fidelity. I am not using uh, FSR right now, we are going to try that later. For now let's just use the settings and um, at 1080p and see how that goes. So I will call the horse and ride around a bit. 
So with the RTX 4000 series cards that I've tested, like the 4050 in different uh, variants, versions like 45 watt, uh, 105 and 140 watt, this game did not run as good as I immediately see it running here because um, once more we are having almost perfect 1% lows and a perfectly smooth frame time graph as you can see on the upper left corner um, in the OSD. It's super flat, there are no spikes going on like at all right now. There might be some hiccups once in a while, but right now it's amazing. It's a super great, it's a super smooth experience in my opinion. Oh, there's a shooting going on, let's see. If we get some action, uh, what will happen. So it doesn't seem to affect the FPS in any way. Uh, the shooting, I mean. The O'Driscoll gang, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I fast travel to the picturesque town of Strawberry, in which we are still getting 80 FPS on average. So far I had an average of over 100. And what I'm going to do now is um, I will travel from here to Saint-Denis, riding all the way, and um, tell you what the average FPS is going to be. Um, on that way, I will reset and see you in a bit. Well, so far we are having an average of about 99 FPS, 100 FPS, with great, amazing 1% lows of 78 so far. That's really, really good and stable. Um, super fluid and smooth experience so far. Um, I'm eager to see how that is going to work out in Saint Denis, where CPU and uh, RAM are playing a bigger role. I really wonder why this runs so much better on this card um, or in this laptop than on your RTX laptops if it's um, it has to do with the CPU being a Ryzen which is not having the e-cores which might cause some problems in Windows for some people I don't know whereas the e-cores are actually supposed to help reducing stutters and frame drops oh look he's looking for Gavin Oh, poor guy. Okay, so we arrived at Saint-Denis. Let's see how the FPS is reacting to that. So we are seeing um, a slight drop in FPS to around 80. 82, but still it's um, very stable. The 1% low are um, really fine. We're not even using FSR so far. It actually doesn't um, affect the performance as much as I was expecting. Works perfectly fine on this laptop. I'd say let's jump to the next game. All right, we are also going to do a quick test in Subnautica using the high settings. So right now I'm actually seeing some initial stutters. Let's see if they disappear after just roaming around for a little while. We'll stay at the shallow waters in the beginning. Okay, I'll reset the measurement real quick. Maybe, oh. I mean, the FPS are good. It's like 90-ish, 80-ish. Rich FPS is okay. 1% low are not that perfect. The frame time graph is kind of flat, but it has like micro, micro spikes. You don't feel, you can't feel them um, when playing the game, but um, they actually cause a, um, a bit lower 1% lower low FPS. So let's just go somewhere else and see how the FPS will react. Right now we'll have a average FPS of around 100 on high settings. A few stutters here and there, nothing bad so far. Okay, let's just go into some deeper waters. You're seeing about 86 FPS on average right now. Total average FPS of 105 so far. Okay, in this area we're getting up to 120 FPS actually just quickly get out of the vessel and repair it and then we'll actually change the resolution to 4k and what do you say okay i'm a bit confused right now because the fs dropped to 34 which should not have happened it's, um we had like 120 before and the vram is not the problem obviously the card is at full load Running at around 90 watt 
and still we're only getting 35-ish FPS, so the game does not <laughs> seem to scale well with 4K, actually. I mean, it is still playable at 35 SP FPS, but coming from 100 FPS, this is quite a bit disappointing. For some reason, this game is having problems um, using 4K. I don't know why. We're still getting around 93 to 40 FPS for some reason. And around 100 or more um, using Full HD. So maybe it's just not supposed to be. So um, at least it's uh, very... At le so at least it's running really well at 1080p and high settings. Well, maybe dropping the settings a bit will help. Let's just do that really quick to see if it's related somehow. Medium settings, still just 50 FPS. Well, okay, next game. So, okay, the last game for today is going to be a strategy game called NO1800. And we are currently looking at it at 1080p and very high settings. Let's just restart the measurement, which also switches us to another region. And um, it really depends on um, how big your cities are, uh, where you are looking at. So the FPS actually varies a lot. The game is absolutely playable. Um, with 30 FPS, you don't need super high FPS in this game. So anything that is above 30 is fine usually. I would personally prefer visual fidelity over high FPS in this case. So very high settings. If we turn the camera around like this, but this is also happening on very powerful systems as well. If you're looking um, above a bigger city, then the FPS might drop. Let's test it with the real big city that we have over here. Turn the camera like this. This is just uh, what's happening. Goes down to 80, 90, but usually you don't play the game that way, so it's not a big problem. Usually you like this, and you're jumping around between your islands, clicking on stuff, My ambitions exist or sometimes scrolling in, in to see what the people are doing, enjoying the view and enjoying um, the way they walk and work. So I said before, this is on very high settings, not using FSR so far, because this game only has FSR 1.0, which will definitely um, wants to. have an impact on the visual quality. The problem is that my keys for resetting um, the measurement also changes the region. No, so okay, so I don't care. Um, let's just look around a bit more. And then I guess we'll call it a day because it's perfectly playable even on very high settings at 1080p. We'll just quickly see how far the FPS drop when we choose 4K once more. But in this case, it's probably going to drop quite a bit. All right, so we are at 4K and actually it's still at 31 FPS. Well, it's actually doable on very high settings. It, it doesn't really seem to impact the FPS that much at all. That's weird, considering how it just um, destroyed the FPS when playing um, Subnautica. But in here, we're basically fine. Okay, so you could play Anno 1800 at 4K on very high settings on this laptop and still get around 30 FPS or more. Okay, so that's it for this video, I guess. This is the last game for today and this took a very long time to record and I already started editing the first games. It's um, I know it's going to be a long video and if you made it up to this point, thank you for watching the video. I don't know if I'm going to make this again. That depends on your feedback, your comments and how often this video is going to be watched. So tell your friends about it if they can't decide whether to get a 7600S or not. Who am I kidding? You won't tell anybody. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye and tschüss.